Aloha and welcome to the Kapuni Wiki Radio Show. This month we are talking about senior services. And virtually in studio, we have Lori Lau, director of the Lana Kila Meals on Wheels. Kapuna Wiki is Hawaii's senior resource. We talk to the best local professionals in the state regarding topics such as real estate, senior housing, estate planning, finance, and health, so that our Kapuna families can find the best resources in the midst of life transition. We strive to make sure our seniors are informed and supported every step of the way. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Brandon Lau. And I'm Andrew Leong, your host for the Kapuna Wiki radio show. Our title sponsor for today is Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors, providing you with the best real estate information so you can make the most informed decisions. As they like to say, real estate is about choice. To contact them, call 753-9033. And now we have our Real Estate Tip of the Week, brought to you by Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors. When water intrudes into your property, mold growth can start as, in as little as 48 hours. Mold is a type of fungus that sprouts from tiny spores that float above in the air. Mildew is another common type of mold that sits on the surface of damp walls, old doors, shower grouts, and more. This type of mold looks like tiny black spots and can easily be scrubbed away with a cleaning brush and store-brought mold killer. Other types of mold can be a bit more damaging to a home, depending on the size of the infestation. You may, you may begin to notice a damp must odor in a specific area of your home. This means you should check for damp walls, carpets, floorings, and any, any other spaces that may be breeding grounds for mold. The key is to treat a mold problem immediately before the infestation becomes worse or causes permanent damage. For more information on hazardous situations in your home uh, and how to prevent it, contact Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors at 753-9033. Again, today we have uh, Lori Lau with us, and she is the director of Lana Kila Meals on Meals. Uh, welcome back, Lori. Thank you for having me. Well, we know you've been busy, uh, especially right now during this uh, season of uh, combating COVID. Uh, but before we get into that excitement, maybe you can share with our listeners uh, who may not have uh, heard you before a little bit about yourself and, and what you do within the community. Um, okay, so I am the director of Lana Kilo Meals on Wheels. Um, Lana Kilo Meals on Wheels is Hawaii's largest and only island-wide home-delivered meal provider. Um, it is our privilege to be able to deliver meals to seniors and individuals with disabilities, um, regardless of where they live on Oahu. Um, we um, really think of ourselves as more than a meal service. Um, you know, our intention, of course, is to be able to help people be able to stay at home. Um, but our volunteers that help with us, um, they're able to provide a wellness check. They're be able to provide a friendly visit. You know, it's really about um, making sure there's a relationship as well, um, so that the seniors can feel cared for um, and know that um, we're there to support them. That's great. Now, Lana Kila is a large organization. Uh, they have roots that go back quite a ways, and so um, your portion of it as Meals and Wheels, um, I mean, you're probably one of the more well-known arms of Mauna Kea, uh, but share with us um, maybe some other aspects that Mauna Kea might be involved in. Yeah, so Mauna Kea um, is actually 81 years old, wow. um, and we have um, evolved throughout the years. Um, so our founder was actually Violet Cam, mm -hmm. um, and back in 1939, um, along with um, the Rehabilitation Hospital and Kuakini Medical, um, we were established to support people that were suffering from tuberculosis. Um, and so after they went through their medical recovery and sort of their physical rehabilitation and things like that, we picked up in trying to integrate them back into community. Um, most likely they would have lost their job, they would have lost loved ones, right? They would have needed a, a pathway to become independent again. If you fast forward so many years, thankfully tuberculosis is no longer an issue in Hawaii and so Lana Kila Rehabilitation had to reinvent itself and we became Lana Kila Crafts. Um, and to this day, some people still stop me and talk about the amazing craft fairs um, that Lana Kila Crafts <laughs> used to have. Um, and it really was again in the spirit of supporting people with challenges. Uh, we focus mostly, mostly on individuals with physical disabilities. So we were really a manufacturing company. We hired individuals with physical disabilities and we produced items 
that you would see in like the made in Hawaii section um, of a store or like the swap meet. So everything from tiki cups to grass skirts to pot holders and pillowcases. Um, and it was really about teaching people a trade um, and being able to pay, um, pay fair wages and then employment opportunities for people with disabilities. You fast forward so many years, um, two things happened. Um, one is that within the workplace, um, people became much more accepting of having people with disabilities employed. There was a lot more assistive technology um, available to help people with physical disabilities. Um, you also quite truthfully had a flood into the market of items made um, from overseas um, that quite truthfully were cheaper than what we could make them for. Um, and so we had to evolve again um, into our current iteration, which is Mauna Kea Pacific. Uh, we still continue to support people with challenges, now mostly people with intellectual disabilities through our adult day health programs, um, through our workforce training programs. Uh, what we're really also known for in the community is providing um, job training opportunities and employment for people with intellectual disabilities with the hope that once they graduate from our program, they're able to find competitive employment in the community. Um, and our Lana Kila Meals on Wheels senior service programs fall into that um, in helping people with age-related challenges. So you really do help the spectrum of community, those who are somewhat challenged physically, intellectually, or you know, uh, otherwise. And Lana Kila Meals on Wheels is, um, I guess, how, how many years has that been going on? So we've been around since 1971, okay. so we are 49 years Go old. Ahead. Next year is the big 5 0. <laughs> now, um, you know, we have gone into this unprecedented time with the coronavirus, and so delivery services have become a lifeline for many households, and I imagine for seniors in general. You know, it's just dangerous to go outside of your house if you're part of that vulnerable population. Um, how have you been impacted, and I'll just say, how have you been able to respond to the new needs out there in the community? Yeah, right in the beginning, um, probably end of February, beginning in March, um, we started getting a flood of phone calls. Um, seniors that maybe wouldn't have thought in the past about a home delivery program, um, really thought now that it became a, um, an essential um, service um, in order to allow them to be able to stay at home and risk exposing themselves. Um, one of the things we did right away um, following the guidance of a 14-day quarantine is we provided a, an emergency set of meals to everybody um, in our program. So that was a 14-day supply of food um, that we distributed to everyone in the program and also to other um, providers that serve seniors. Um, so we were able to help some of our um, provider partners as well. Um, and we just thought that that was so important, um, thinking about even if something were to happen to us um, and we had to shut down for a mandatory 14-day quarantine, we wanted to make sure that they had the food already in their homes um, and available to them. Um, after we were able to provide the emergency food, uh, we started looking into other services um, that we could do to be supportive. Um, so um, we started a uh, talk with Kapuna program, um, knowing that during this time, seniors might feel um, even more anxious, maybe even more depressed, maybe have even more questions about what's going on and not necessarily have an outlet to be able to talk to somebody and ask somebody questions, or even just talk story and, um, and have a relationship with someone because they're not going out anymore. So I'm curious, you know, I mean, that's such a basic human need. And um, how, who thought of that? And how did you then, you know, get people on, on the phones to help and answer questions and just be there to connect with them? Yeah, so that, um, we were really fortunate. Um, we actually partnered with the Blue Zones um, to be able to do that. Um, and it really just came um, even from looking at um, the needs of our own employees, 
right? Just kind of realizing that even if you are watching the news, even if you do read the newspaper, it's not like you can talk to the TV and ask your questions, um, you know, and have a Although discussion. I've done that. Um, <laughs> I you certainly get a can, response. but you might not get a response. <laughs> Um, and so it, it really even just us having to support our own employees um, and realizing that they had they had questions, they had fear, they had um, other emotional supports that had to be provided, not just um, employment that they were doing for Lana Kila Pacific. Um, and so we started that service and it's something that we are intending to do ongoing even after COVID. Um, for anyone that is lonely and wants somebody to talk to. Um, so we're, we're working out the details to do that long term as well. And can we ask if there's a phone number um, that somebody can call if that's something they need assistance with? Um, there, there is. Okay. And so we, um, you know, when the, the lines are open, so they're scheduled, you know, we oh, let the okay. seniors know. And um, my hesitancy is, is it's not open to the general public. Okay, so, so it's within your, I can say, membership? Yeah, okay. the, the people that we're servicing. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so the, um, the Talk with Kapuna service. And we're very fortunate to have volunteers that want to support us um, to make the phone calls. I imagine this kind of like added value benefit would really enhance uh, the, the quality and care that you provide to your members. I mean, it would make people want to be involved more, I would think. And it's been a really, um, the volunteers that have done it have been really surprised. Um, I think when they first signed up to do it, they didn't really know what was going to happen. You know, to make a call with a stranger that you've never met before. Um, but what they found is that they have so much more in common than they realized. Um, we generally recommend that the phone calls go about 20 minutes, but sometimes it's kind of like <laughs> nudging them, like, um, you're still on the phone, you know, kind of thing. Um, Pull the line type of motion. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it, it, I think that they have found that even with different generations, different demographics, different areas of the island that they're living and different life experiences, uh, we have so much more in common than we realize. Well, Laurie, I think it's wonderful. I want to continue to talk about ways that uh, Lana Kila has been able to innovate in response to the current COVID situation. But also, I want to get into um, the meat of how you have continued to improve and maybe grow your service to the community as Lana Kila Meals on Meals. So, we'll talk more about that right after this commercial break. Welcome back. Uh, we have Lori Lau, she's the director of Lanquila Meals on Wheels. Uh, and right before the break, uh, we were kind of we were talking about how uh, Lanquila has, uh, you know, kind of expanded uh, the projects due to, um, you know, the current COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and you touched upon a great one, Kapuna Talk, which I, I think is it's a great added service that you guys are, are currently uh, doing. I think given that the time that you know people are locked down, especially seniors, right? They're used to seeing that face they come by to deliver the meals, maybe have a small chat, but now they can actually have someone on the phone as an a, you know a, another person to talk to. Uh, so I wanted to find out from you what other services have you guys expanded on um, during this time. Uh, so something else that um, we started recently um, is a service we're calling the Green Bag. Uh, what the green bag is um, attempting to support local agriculture. So it is locally grown produce. Um, and we are able to provide that local produce um, to the seniors that we serve. Um, again, this idea is that people um, may not have as many resources during this time. Um, you know, not wanting to go to the store um, to be able to shop, and even maybe their loved ones are limiting contact um, to, again, not expose themselves. Um, and so the green bag becomes a way for um, the seniors to be able to have something fresh um, that can supplement their home-delivered meals. Um, so examples of items that we've been producing uh, in our green bags are things like um, Big Island lychee. Um, we put out papaya, 
Uh, we've put out cucumbers. Um, we've put out zucchini, sweet potatoes, right? So these are supposed to be familiar items. Um, nothing requires you to turn on a stove. Um, so many um, seniors have told us they've been cooking their sweet potatoes in the microwave. Um, and, and it's it just, works. It, it's actually better. Yeah, it's really actually cool. better. Sweet potato in the microwave is actually better. Um, and so, you know, again, it's, it's not to replace the meals that they receive from us, but it is um, in order for them to have these fresh items throughout the week to enjoy um, on top of their home delivered meals. Um, and then each week um, when they um, receive their meal delivery, they would have the opportunity to get a green bag as well. That's great. And you're also supporting the local, local farmers and the local businesses. Yes, definitely in the in the work that we do, um, you know, we realize how tied we are to our food, um, food supply chain, right? Not just the distributors that um, move the food around, but also the farmers that are that are growing our produce. I imagine local farmers haven't had an outlet for all of their produce, so they don't want it to go to waste. And it's so good that you're having that distribution chain available. Yes, you know. yes. So we've definitely benefited from the partnership and the generosity of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Um, they've been really um, supporting us um, to be able to um, start this green bag um, service. And, and is this, um, how often is this service available? Is it once a week? Um, yeah. Or they call in to kind of request for one? How, how does that work? So everybody we um, provide service to is getting it right now. Okay. Um, and. Um, the way I describe it to people that maybe are familiar with a similar type of service is it's kind of like a CSA, um, right? a community supported agriculture box, mm -hmm. right? where you kind of get a curated uh, box um, and you don't really get to choose what's in it. It's, 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 it's the surprise okay. of the week. Um, but it's, it's, it's a bit like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a curated box. You know, we choose items that we think are senior friendly. Um, like manoa lettuce, um, like, you know, Whole Farms tomatoes kind of thing. Um, and then we're able to um, provide it to them. Now, Laurie, I know you folks have your, your standard meal portions per individual and household, I guess, who's on your list. You know, a lot of these um, regular restaurants have uh, kind of adapted to having larger portions because maybe to feed more people in the family or in the household. Have you folks been able to modify those things at all or you just kind of keep it consistent with how it was before? Yeah, we're, we're not really set up to do like a, like a family style kind right. of model, but certainly we have um, spouses mm -hmm. on the program. Um, and so when that happens, um, we, they basically get two identical sets. So okay. they get two okay. of everything. Which makes sense because everything is kind of organized that that way accordingly. Mm -hmm. Now, there's um, I know a lot of the uh, services that you folks provide are to households that sometimes can't afford uh, these these goods or meals. Um, so, what percentage of your deliveries are of that category, and, and how are they able to uh, find the resources to, to receive? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, of all the individuals that we are serving right now, uh, the majority of them, I would say at least 90% of the individuals um, are able to have their service funded through some other way, whether it be through the city and county elderly affairs division, whether it be through Medicaid, um, health insurance, um, they're able to have their service funded. Um, right now, maybe about 10% of the individuals are self-paying for the service. And that is actually very high for us. That is really a response to COVID, that so many um, households have just called to sign up. And they said, you know, we don't really need the service. I just don't want my mom or dad going out anymore. Right. So the family is just willing to pay. Um, for individuals that are looking for the service and they can't necessarily qualify to get the meals for free, um, either you can pay out of pocket, 
If you're not able to pay out of pocket, something else that we help people do is sign up for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. So the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program is a federal program. It's free to enroll and it basically puts money for food um, on a, a plastic card that looks like a credit card or a debit card and That's you're your, able... Your classic snap card. Your, your classic snap right. card. Um, and then you're able to use it at a grocery store, you're able to use it at certain farmers markets, um, places that sell groceries, uh, but you can also use the benefit to pay for a home delivered meal service. Um, and so really if the reason why you are not in a home delivered meal service is because you think you can't afford it um, and you don't necessarily qualify to get the meals for free, then you can call us and we can help you sign up for SNAP um, and then you can use your SNAP benefits to pay for the service. Yeah, that's, that's so great. I think a lot of people don't approach that uh, idea of SNAP because they don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. right? But you guys are going to consult with them, walk them through the process. And I think that makes all the difference. Yeah. I think that's great that it's not, you know, you're opening uh, more doors to, to people. I mean, it's not just seniors, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it's families that are affected from COVID, right? right? The ones that are not working currently. And so they, you know, they are still needing to feed their families. Uh, and I think that's, uh, the great thing is that it's not no longer just the grocery, uh, you know, to go into the store to buy grocery. You can actually have it delivered, the meal delivered, which is... Right. And that a benefit. It keeps people at home, uh, lowers the risk of getting getting the virus. Um, so it's I think not too many people know about it. So I'm I'm glad that you're here to, to share that because hopefully you, by them listening, you you probably get more uh, more people applying for it and, and right. getting this assistance. Right. I I mean I think that some people feel like they don't want to sign up for the SNAP benefit because they know the challenge of trying to get to the supermarket. Right. They're not intending to cook for themselves. So they say, well, why would I sign up? And when they realize that you can use it for a home delivered meal service, um, basically to get your home delivered meals for free, then it makes sense to sign up for the SNAP benefit if the SNAP benefit can pay for the home delivered meal service. Laura, somebody listening right now wanted to know, well, what number can I call for somebody to help me with this? Is there a general number they can reach out to? Yeah, so our SNAP outreach number is 356-8516. And, and that's open Monday through Friday? Yep. Okay. Now, I know you mentioned that there's been a growing demand um, for your services. And being that you've been doing what you're doing for 49 years, I'm sure uh, when this demand uh, increased people look to you to help fill the, the gaps. Um, share with us uh, what kind of growth have you had for your demand of meals or just uh, your service in general? Yeah, um, I think um, early on uh, we were um, we were inundated, that's how I would describe it. <laughs> you know, the phone was pretty much ringing constantly. Um, early on in the beginning of the stay at home orders, we were adding more than 100 people a week. Wow. You know, I mean, we were just adding and adding. Um, and as much as it really pushed us to our limits to be able to process that many people and wrap up so quickly, um, one of the things that we as a team um, really took a lot of pride in was knowing that if ever there was a time for a Meals on Wheels service, it's now. Right. Um, and so it took a lot of hard work, um, but we were really happy to be able to do it. And I can tell that it's very fulfilling for you to be able to meet that need. Yeah, it, there's, a, there's a lot of satisfaction in knowing that when we look back on this COVID-19 period, we'll know what we were doing during this time. That is so true. Um, now, Given the demand and, and your uh, ability to meet it, is there a, a path that you see you can um, keep growing and is it scalable? Will you have enough to support the demand going forward? Yeah, you know, we're very fortunate um, in being such a well-established program and having the support of the entire Lana Pila Pacific family um, that, you know, our mission is to serve. And at, if the capacity um, is needed, if 
if there are still others that need the service, then um, you know I think we're we're willing we're willing and able to do it. And if somebody wanted to help your cause and get involved, what are a couple of ways you can recommend? You that? Yeah, so um, certainly people can still sign up to volunteer. Okay. Um, if they're willing to give their time, um, and they can also make a monetary donation um, if they just want to support um, the expenses for the program. That's great. Now, if they wanted to do that, how can they reach out to you or your office? Yeah, so a really easy way if you're able to is to go to the website, um, which is lanakilamealsonwheels.org, and there's a donate button on that page. Um, they can also call us um, by phone um, at 356 8519 um, and uh, we can talk with them through there. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Again, we're talking with Lori Lau, Director of Mauna Kea Meals on Meals. And thank you so much for serving the community at this crucial time and for being on our show. Thank you. Coming up next, we have our Kapunamiki Classic Trip.